matter they melt down they talk about our god is the creator of the heavens and the earth and is the possessor of the heavens and the earth and he has promised us that this year will be a good year or the best year you have ever lived since you are born in jesus name because it says we will eat the fruit of the land this year but look at what follows not verse 13 and it came to pass when joshua was by where by where and that's what i'm telling you jericho jericho many people just say i will shout and then the jericho walls will fall wait don't shout yet find out what did joshua do before chapter 6 when he was by jericho then it says that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I might now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did again. Worship, he did worship, and he said unto him, What says who? My Lord unto his servant. You see, the worship it is worship that will lead us into the blessing. It is worship that will lead us into the blessing. We need to realize this that this year, so that you know, sometimes you're a little bit uh, tired and weary or weak, or you know, maybe the money is not enough, and this and that, and then you have to come to worship the Lord. Many people will say, I don't think I will go today, that's the best time to come. When you're tired, that's the best time to come. When you're sick, that's the best time to come. And when you're weary, that's the best time to come. When Jericho walls are before you, and you're looking at Jericho walls, and then you're saying, what am I going to do? Will I worship God today? Because look at my Jericho walls. At the time when you see those Jericho walls, that's the time you have to come and worship. And if you worship God at that time, the enemies that you see that day, you'll never see them anymore. Because it is worship that leads us into the abundance of the Lord. Let me show you 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 19. And some of these verses were thought we knew. And, uh, but now you are going to see it in a new light, your worship, and then the blessing will come. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 19. And they rose up, and they rose up in the morning early and did what? Tell me out loud. Worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Anna, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. But first of all, she worshipped. She worshipped. And when she worshipped, the Bible says, and the Lord remembered her. If we don't remember the Lord, and we're only thinking about ourselves, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have that, and it didn't make a good transportation in our district for me to go to the combined service, and even the local service in our district over there, you know, we are, the people, they don't show love, and they're not coming to do this and do that, I will not go. If you don't remember the Lord, how will the Lord remember you? You will remember the Lord. When you remember the Lord and you worship the Lord, then the Lord will remember Remember you and do great mighty things in your life you never knew in Jesus name we're looking at 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 verse 18 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 we're looking at verse 18 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 look at verse 18 and Joshua bowed his head with his face to the ground and all the and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord was the next word worshiping the lord worshiping the lord you see that's what he did joshua had a problem it's at the time we have problem at the time we have challenges at the time we have difficulties that's the time to worship the lord they fell and they worshiped the lord look at the result in verse 22 and when they began to sing and to praise when they began to sing and to praise you know, some people don't sing until all the clouds clear away. All the difficulties melt away. All their difficulties are gone. All their sicknesses, are, they don't sing until it is seen. Now I've got my miracle. Now I can sing. The battle was there. 
the enemies were there, the difficulties were there, and the challenges were there. But Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah, they worshipped. And after that worship, then they began to sing. And the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten because they worshipped. This year, you were worshipped. Judges chapter 7, Judges chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 15, Judges chapter 7, verse 15, and it, and it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped, he worshipped, you know many people do not understand, they just say Gideon had a great victory, but you know, he worshipped before that victory, and he will say Joseph had a great victory, and God conquered all those enemies, yes I know, but he worshipped before that, and then God remembered Anna, and gave that barren woman a miracle child, yes I know, but she worshipped. The thing the Lord is telling us this year, as this year is a new year, and we're going to get into blessings we have never seen in our lives before, miracles we have never seen in our lives before. We're going to start with worship. And when you worship, good things are going to happen to you. Then look at verse 21 in verse 21. And he stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the 300 men, the 300 blew of the trumpets. And the people set every man's sword against his fellow. Even throughout all the hosts. And the hosts fled uh, to Bethsheta and uh, Zarephath. Zereth Rav, Rav and, or, and to the border of Abel Mehola, unto Tabath. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and unto, out of Asher and out of all Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. They overcame because, first of all, there was worship. Worship the Lord this year. Great things are going to happen to you. Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. First, the worship. After that, the miracle, the wonders and the signs of your life this year. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. There was still a leper. The leprosy was still there. The sickness was still there. The stigma was still there. But he worshipped. The leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Before he even said that, you worship first. And before you bring your request, before you say, Lord, look at my need and look at my need and look at my prayer request, you worship the Lord. Forget yourself for the moment. And just exalt and magnify and worship the Lord. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean immediately. His leprosy was, was cleansed. Matthew chapter 15. In Matthew chapter 15, we're looking at verse 25. Worship first, worship first, worship the Lord. If you worship the Lord this year, loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, miracles will never stop in your life. Matthew chapter 15, verse 25. Matthew 15, 25. And then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. She came and she worshipped and she said, Lord, help me. And he said unto her, it is not meat, it is not right, suitable to give the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, trust, Lord. Truth, Lord, when you are really worshipping the Lord, you will never contradict the Lord. Whatever the Lord says, whatever the Lord tells you, and whatever name the Lord calls you, whatever mistake or error or disposition the Lord points out in your life, when you are truly worshipping the Lord, you will not contradict the Lord. You will not say, no, no, Lord. I don't, want, I don't like that statement. No, Lord. I don't like that message. No, Lord. I don't like that counseling. You will love everything the Lord says when you are really worshipping the Lord. And this year will be a year of worship in Jesus' name. A year of praising the Lord. A year of adoration. A year of exalting the Lord. A year of just forgetting ourselves. And forgetting what we want. 
and forgetting who you want to be and just saying God will have the glory God will receive the glory in my life because we are made and created for the glory of God and then you worship the Lord and then he says it's not right it's not suitable to give that which belongs to children unto the dogs and then she said trust Lord trust Lord but the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall on the master's table then jesus answered and said unto her o woman great is thy faith be it unto thee even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole from that very hour your daughter will be made whole your children will be made whole your wife will be made whole you know some people that say you know my wife is going through this challenge and this difficulty i can't worship the lord now that's the best time to worship the lord my husband is going through this and going through that i cannot worship the lord now that's the best time to worship the lord because when you worship the lord in that situation every negative situation will change in jesus name john chapter 9 john chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 31 john chapter 9 but such a one, now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, if any man be a worshiper of God, this year I will be that man. And you will be that woman. Any man, anyone be a worshiper of God, him uh, and doeth his will. He worships God and he does the will of God, him he hear it. He will answer your prayer. The Lord has told us what it takes, very simple, to move on to Canaan land this year. And to move on to the promised land this year. And this day, we're going to cross over. Number one, you leave the wilderness behind. Bye-bye, wilderness, wilderness, no more. Number two, you live by the word of God. Everything you hear that God tells us, say, Lord, I'm going to have a good response, a positive response to the word of God this year, not like it used to be prompt, immediate obedience to the word of God, and I'm going to be a worshiper of the Lord, and in your life this year, signs and wonders. Your life this year, miracles. Your life this year, the power of the Holy Ghost. In your life this year, satisfaction. In your life this year, there will be sufficiency. In your life this year, dominion and victory you are going to have in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, it's a new year. The Lord has called us to a new year. The Lord has called us to a new year. And yours will be a new life. you will be a new personality. The sorrows of the past are all gone. The challenges of the past are all gone. This is going to be a new year for you. Please rise up and you tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I know you are willing to have this blessing of the Lord. You're making your covenant and your pact with the Lord. Blessings are waiting for you. Riches are waiting for you. Possibilities are waiting for you. Miracles waiting for you. Signs and wonders are waiting for you this year. This will not be a year of crying. This will not be a year of tears. This will not be a year of sorrow. No, never. This will not be a year of death. It's a year of life. A year of abundance. A year of joy. It's not a year of discouragement. It's not going to be a year of need, of loss. You will not lose your children. You will not lose your job. You will not lose your wife. You will not lose your husband. You will not lose your blessing. It's a year of addition and multiplication. It's not a year of division. It's not a year of subtraction. It's a year of addition. A year of multiplication, a year of abundant joy, a year of bearing fruit, a year of miracle, a year of having children, a year of marriage. It's not going to be a year of funeral for you, for your family. It's going to be a year of life, 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 life in abundance. Not a year of concern, weeping, crying, sorrow, sleeplessness. 
all that is gone. But the Lord is saying, make up your mind, leave the wilderness behind you. Leave the wilderness behind you. Leave the wilderness behind you. This year, just love everybody. No complaints, no murmur. This year, no hatred, no unforgiveness. This year, a year of fellowship, a year of love, a year of affection, a year of cooperation, a year of appreciating one another, and a year of exalting the Lord. Wilderness will leave our wilderness behind. A year of forgiveness, a year of mercy, a year of claiming the promises of the Lord, it's a year of salvation, it's a year of restoration. Just tell the Lord, this year is a year of obedience. Living by the word of the Lord. Whatever he says, we will not question him. We will not say, why, why, why? The year of obedience. A year of grace. A year of grace. The grace of God abundant in our lives. And it's a year of worshiping the Lord, worshiping the Lord, worshiping the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And because we we'll worship, ours will be the blessing. If you have never given your life to the Lord, right now give your life to Christ. And say, Lord, I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Take all my sins away. Give me your salvation. Then thank him. Thank you, Lord. I believe my, my sins are taken away. I believe I'm forgiven. I believe I'm saved. Because Jesus died for me. Believers, tell the Lord, circumcise my heart. Purify my heart. Make me holy within and pure within. Sanctify me, Lord, and thank Him that He has done it. And then commit yourself to worshiping the Lord wholeheartedly oh, this year. Great things await you from this very day, for the rest of this year, for the rest of your life. We're leaving the wilderness behind. Good, good things will begin to happen to us now. In Jesus' name we pray. The blessed people of the Lord, where are you? In Jesus' name we pray. Happy New Year. Glorious New Year. Prosperous New Year. Successful New Year. The wilderness is gone. I said the wilderness is gone. Sorrow is gone. Sickness gone. Calamity gone. All the that we have lost, we are getting them back in Jesus' name. Every request, every desire, whether it is reaching our heart or reaching on paper, everything you've got in it in Jesus' name. It is well with you. It is well with your wife. It's well with your husband. Well with your children. Well with daddy and mommy at home. It is well on your job. No demotion promotion. No demotion promotion. You are the head. You will not be the tail in Jesus' name. You will ride the storm and get to the victory land. Canaan land, Canaan land, Canaan land, you have reached it already. 
you will never come down from that mountain. God has lifted you up, you will not fall. Let's raise up our hands and seal the blessing for this new year. Don't think like you thought last year. Don't expect evil because evil will not come. Don't expect enemies, enemies are turned to friends. Don't expect that, you know, this year will be rough. There's no roughness for you this year. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. As you are walking with the Lord this year, you have a lot of testimonies in your mouth. Every district, in every home, everywhere. Testimonies in Jesus' name. Whatever you lost before this time, before this day, the Lord will multiply and bring back to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we we'll thank you, Lord, because you have brought us to this new year. Lord, we come to make a covenant of peace.